Finally guys, I am finally ready to do another video and today we are painting this wonderful lady from Loot Studios that I printed on my 3D printer. She turned out amazing and I'm giving myself a little challenge. I'm only using the Ninjon and the Vince Vinterella signature series from Pro Acryl and a little black and white. You want to see how it turned out? Let's go! I can tell you that I wouldn't have made it without black and white. These two sets are absolutely amazing. They have gorgeous colors. I love the white blue and I especially love, um, where is it? Um, yeah, that's it, the dark magenta. Gorgeous colors, but they are more like an addition to the bright Pro Acryl range, like they are favorite colors. And it was challenging to paint a whole miniature just with these colors but i had a lot of fun both signature sets come in six colors and they're absolutely stunning and a really nice addition to what pro acryl already delivers they are super consistent uh, you don't need to thin them that much and i immensely enjoy working with pro acryl paints so first of all i printed a miniature from loot studios i'm a subscriber for years now and i basically own the entire backlog catalog and then i gave it a nice zenithal prime Doing base coats with Pro Acryl is amazing. You don't need to thin it that much, it has great coverage and you can load your brush with tons of paint to just keep on painting those base coats. All surfaces that need special attention and highlighting are mostly painted in the same way. I always take a bit lighter color and paint around 90% of the area. And then I take the next lighter paint and the next lighter paint. And of course you get brighter paint by mixing in white and after that you get some harsh layer lines and the best part here is just mix up your mid-tone with a monument glazing medium and glaze over it one or two times you get perfect transitions a lot of things have changed for me like in my personal life and inside me and i'm so glad that you're still around to watch my videos and i really appreciate that some of you guys are even Patreon still, even I took a huge break of three months and I am so happy that you guys decided to stay. And if you want to join in, I try to do at least one video every month. I would prefer to, but life is hectic, you know, new job, new city and all that. But if you want to join in, feel free uh, to jump on my Patreon. It will be greatly appreciated. For the wings, I wanted to try something totally different, but still rely on that glazing technique with a monument glaze medium. So I went over with a mustardy brown dry brush and then thinned down a purple tone and glazed it all over the wings in two or three or even four coats, which gave them this flashy look, but still kept this demonic purple on it. And I really enjoyed the process and I really liked how it turned out. I went with the grey for the hair and tried to remember what Sensei Sumikito told me, don't do spaghetti hair and I tried to highlight full volumes and not just strains. Also the stream is not forgotten. <laughs> I tried to work up the motivation to stream again, but it's hard because I lost all of my followers, um, but I want to get into it again because I immensely enjoy hanging out with you guys. After I repainted the base black. I went over with a thinned down brown to get in the first layers of the stonework. I also used that as a base for the skull, which I painted later on with bony colors, basically off-white. For the stonework itself, I went on with a lighter brown to paint those parts of the rock or of the stone that would be mostly stepped on and gave them some nice variation. Fun part was the edge highlighting, which gave the stonework some real depth. Also, it's a quite enjoyable process and I got to mix some more colors. Especially with reds, purples and magentas, which are quite a lot of on this miniature, I kind of struggle. No, I don't struggle, but it is a tedious process. They don't cover that well and you have to do highlights and glazing and highlights and glazing all over and over and over again to make them look good. But in the end, it's freaking worth it. Well, I kind of suck when it comes to non-metallic metal, but I really tried and I really enjoyed trying it on this miniature with the Pro Acryl paints. 
I am not great with non-metallic metal, but this process really got to me. Basically, I painted the whole armor parts black. I then went over with a, what is that, a beige? I don't know. And I highlighted the parts that would mostly do the reflections. And further highlighted and accented all those reflections and smaller parts with a white. And well, that's not really a transition, isn't it? So the next step is kind of counterintuitive. I went over and glazed a black wash all over those parts again to dull down that metal again and also get a transition for those reflections. And the last part is pretty easy. You take your white and you go in and you pick out those brightest highlights and highlight them again basically. This is a quick no skill in non-metallic metal and with some gloss varnish it looks quite okay. Also to finish her off I gave her a coat of matte varnish and then I added some gloss varnish to her armor parts and to her eyes to make them look a bit wet and alive I guess. Yes I have a quite painterly style, I'm not the smoothest of all painters but I'm super happy with her cloak. The pinkish tone is so nice and the fleshy bits inside the purple wings are also quite amazing I think. Also painting her skin was a real joy with the Pro Acryl paints. Well I think we should just take a closer look eh? Here we go. This was a really fun exercise and as you can see I used nearly every color except for the red-gray because, well, that's a lot of colors to use. And mixing them and mixing them with black and white was enough to finish this miniature. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode and could learn something from it. Maybe I could encourage you to try something new and that's all I really want to do. So if you like this video, please feel free to like, comment and subscribe. It really helps out this channel. And I hope to see you next time here on The Bear and the Brush. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>